Okay, so I think we are now live. Um, let me just make sure that that is all okay on this end. Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, hello everybody. Um, where to even begin? Um, so we're we're having a slightly different setup right now. Um, thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, um, I have improved my working setup. I have a lovely uh, screen here, so I can actually see your comments now. I have my laptop set up with a second screen over here. I can see your comments um, and I can read things and hopefully we can do tonight's stream with a few more polls and things uh, that you can vote on because now I can just type stuff over here um, as well as drawing for you right now, uh, which is very, very exciting. Um, we are going to be drawing some magical armour today. I think it, I think it was Matt Lichtenwarner who suggested or, or stated on in their campaigns they like to um, make armor sets that have kind of like a plus one, plus two, plus three, based on how many parts of these things that their players find and attune to. Um, so the idea being that we would make like a full suit of armor, um, which is split up into three parts. Maybe it's like a helmet, the main body armor and boots or gloves or, you know, a cape or something, something along those lines. We're going to divide it up somehow, and that's going to be our incremental pluses, and then I also want to come up with like what those individual parts do and kind of make them fit as a set, basically. Uh, like they're all, you know, you know, the armor of the phoenix or something, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, it'd be like the helmet of the phoenix and the, the plate mail of the phoenix, whatever. Um, so to that end, we're going to uh, come up with a few different methods of determining what we're actually drawing here tonight because there's so much variety there's so much breadth in that idea uh, that we can really do anything um unfortunately Yvonne who usually is uh sitting just next to me reading out your comments can't be here tonight um her gran is very very unwell and uh the mood in arcane towers has not been as elevated as you'd hope um so she's having some time just to chill I think that's a very nice, like, good idea for her to just, like, relax, basically, because uh, it's been a bit stressful recently. So it's just me and us, and we're going to be uh, chilling out and chatting. I love the idea. I can already see um, the the snail mail uh, coming over from, from uh, Cavman there. That's a very, very good call. But what I thought we could do is to determine, through some polls, um, things like... Uh, let me get a little layer here for, um, what am I going to call this? Suggestions. Um, okay, let's bring that over here. I'm not used to having two screens. There we go, suggestions. Um, so to start off with, um, I thought we could determine what... Maybe the material should come later on because we can have like there's lots of different materials but then like also are we building this for a particular uh you know is it going to have a kind of race background is it going to be sort of like elven armor is it going to be like dwarven armor who made this um i want to know what it's made out of whether it's like um compressed fabric whether it's leathers whether it's you know medium armor if it's like plate mail and things like that um, and some other things like that. So I think what we're going to do to start off with is start a poll um, in the comment section about whether we are making this for a particular species or if we're making this for a particular class. Um, so who, uh, who... Actually, I have a keyboard over here. Why am I doing that? Uh, who is this armor? Four. And my R key is not totally working. Um, so we want to say whether it's for a particular class uh, or a species. Um, what else? Um, whether it's uh, 
maybe that's just a good place to start, whether it's just for a particular class or, or made by a particular uh, group of people, let's say. We can start off there. Um, or just, you know, um, something else. And then we'll figure out what type of armor we're, we're, we're making, whether it's going to be, you know, what material it's going to be. But first poll is out there for you guys. Hopefully that should be visible. Yeah, okay, sweet. Okay, I can now see um, that there. It could be made by Hobgoblins or Bruja. I like it. Very, very cool. Um, I think that tree idea is cool. And either it could be Dryads or Tree Folk. I didn't actually see the earlier tree thing. I do love the armor on this guy. Steve Harrison says from the thumbnail. Oh yes, the Lamar armor, yes. Um, it was it was indeed from someone's uh, bugbear artificer. It was very, very cool. Um, I They were really specific with it. I think it was George Punton, I'm not sure. But they were specific with it and it was really, it was a sort of part of history and mythology. Um, and you know, cultural armor that I'd not really explored. I, I knew it because it has some similarities to kind of ancient Chinese splint mail, um, but it's quite different in that there's a lot of um, a lot more maneuverability for kind of like horse riding and being on foot and things like that. It was it was very cool. It was very cool. It was like winter, uh, like a winter version of kind of Chinese splint mail, um, which was very fascinating. But I'll be intrigued to see. What we end up with here but i'll start making a few a few sort of notes so we could have um let's see here dual screening and everything like wants to pop up on over here on the other side um the other screen it's very temperamental um but i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying having two screens it's actually because this screen that i'm on now is is like 4k um, so uh, compared to this little like 720p uh, MacBook that I have over here, I've, I've looked back at all my old artwork on this new screen. It's all I can see is pixels. Um, so <laughs> hopefully it's going to really improve my drawing. <laughs> but it did make me, you know, like when you get like a macro lens on something that you've painted or you just look up really close to something that you thought was perfect. And then you just stare at it and it's like, oh my God, I've missed so much. But now, now things really are going to be perfect, obviously. Uh, so thank you, patrons, for, for your help in, in creating uh, what will be the future masterpieces that I work on. But let's say, let's go with, um, ooh, wow, okay, that's very, very sketchy. Um, let's change my brush here um, to be a little bit larger. Um, Armor details. Okay, so it's looking like. Um, oh yeah, yeah. We can talk about the individual species if we go for that. Um, Sixty-two percent of you are saying um, that it should be species specific, which I like the idea of. That sounds very cool. Um, so let's go with that. So uh, species. Specific. There we go. Now you can barely see that there's any difference between those two words. Let's do this. Space them out ever so slightly. Nudge, nudge, nudge. There we go. Lovely. Um, up next, I think we should figure out where we're going with. Um, the persuasion of armor okay so i've been following a lot of um really interesting videos recently have popped up in my in my timeline um i wonder if i can find out the name of this of the person because there's this i don't want to presume their gender but um i'm uh, yeah i don't want to yeah don't want to assume the agenda but i'm going to no uh <laughs> let's find out this person's name um this is so great i can now look at my computer while i'm talking to you guys so when you guys say like oh it's a mongolian gribbler beetle i can now actually see what that's going to be um when you make your suggestions of stuff um who is this person 
come on, are you really not going to come up in my suggested videos now that I'm making a point of talking about you? I want to shout out this channel. Um, oh, come on now. I, t I swear to you, before I started this, this video, the only videos that have been recommended to me are this person's um, videos um, for ages, and now not a single one is turning up. Uh, is it because I hit subscribe? Oh, you pain, YouTube algorithm. Why are you doing this to me? No, it's really genuinely not going to show me a single one of their videos. Good grief. Um, hello, Audrin. Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. And Captain Dutchman as well. Um, nice to see you as well. Lovely to see you, Talon. Bohe? Is that how you say it? Talon Bohe? Um, either way, either way. I've been, I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about um, films and their representation of armour and weapons and things of that nature and how practical, how realistic, how logical um, they are versus, you know, kind of film theory. They're not like, like the kind of, you know, I love Scaligrim, for example, um, but... Uh, you know, he looks through, you know, weapons and their realisticness um, in terms of, you know, HEMA, you know, like, what would these things literally be like? But this other person that I've been seeing recently will be saying something along the lines of, um, using a little bit of film theory, here's why this person has decided to exaggerate this weapon or this suit of armour in this particular way, but also here's how it would logically have been also. So it's an interesting alternate view on that kind of thing. Um, and, God, this is an ADHD ramble, I'm sorry. Um, but the where I was going with this is that I was uh, opened up to the idea of uh, cloth armour, which I'd never really thought of before. Um, I'd seen the phrase, the term, and so on quite a lot, um, but I'd never really thought of it as anything genuinely protective. Um, but they were talking about the um, the armour that the Wakandan soldiers use uh, in uh, Black Panther as, you know, literally rock, uh, like wrapped layers of fabric that can be, give or take, as um, as dense as some forms of leather, basically. Um, and I'd never really thought about it. When I see cloth armour in a game, for example, I'm assuming like clothes or a jacket, maybe at best uh, Kevlar or something like that in the modern day setting, but never really actually thinking of it as armour, something genuinely protective. Um, but uh, yeah, it was an interesting thing. So I'm intrigued to see, um, yes, yeah, like, exactly, Steve, like a gambeson, um, that kind of stuff. Because like, I, I get it. I get a gambeson is, is in some way protective, but it never really seemed like armour. It was like the thing that you wear, so armour is slightly more comfortable to me. You know what I mean? But I... Yeah, so I, I want to put in... Um, what, what type of armour are, are we making here? So I'll make another poll here that you guys can vote on. Um, what type? of armour making um, so option one is going to be uh, like cloth you know for that kind of light armour like I'm saying the kind of Wakandan stuff um, then we have you know leather and above so uh, light armour uh, is that light? Yeah, no, cloth and stuff is going to be light. So let's say like leather, etc. You know, that kind of like mid, oh yeah, light armor, mid, mid armor, whatever. Um, add option for medium, like, you know, chain or scale. Uh, Light armor, like cloth and stuff. Mid to light. Like 
leather and so on, medium armor, like chain and scale. Or heavy armor, plate, etc. Right, okay, you guys vote on that and I'll see what you guys uh, have got for me. Um, right, so. Yeah, I, yeah, Kevin, I, I love the idea of checking my watch history for what I've actually been watching. However, um, my brain is such a scattershot of very, very wildly differing uh, interests that we're probably likely to need to sift through about 70 hours worth of two minute um, Star Trek clips before we find a single video that uh, <laughs> actually has this person's name. But it's a good idea um, otherwise. Um, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, just the word Bohe uh, slapped together for Talon Bohe's name. Um, cool, I'll probably just go by Talon, but just so you know, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get that right for when you're, when you're saying hi to me. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you're, you're excited about drawing armor, Aldrin. I really like it as well. I like, I actually have next to me, I collect art books for, um, well, various different things, but a lot of them are from computer games and some of the armor that I love most in the whole world and in general, just the art style in general. Um, are from the Dragon Age games. In specific, I think they really nailed their kind of armor stuff um, in uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. I think it really had a really lovely like cultural flavor and also it was very well thought through in terms of who was actually going to be using it, for example. So I have my Dragon Age Inquisition art book next to me opened on a page with some various pieces of armor for inspiration here. Uh, in particular helmets, because never, I'm never super satisfied with the helmets that I draw. I'm happy with the other armor that I generally tend to draw, but there's a lot of very cool helmets over here on this page, so I have that to, to have for reference here. It's very fun to draw armor, especially if you put some personality into it. Um, what else have we got here? Um, yeah, lots of uh, talking about making sort of... Um, tree armor and things like that, which I really like the sound of. Um, articulations. Uh, what else are we talking about here? The Chinese use silk a lot as well, and it's surprisingly protective. Interesting idea, especially if we're talking about like magical silk there. That's uh, Steve Harrison. I need to I need to get used to it if I'm not being here and like instead of just reading everyone's comments, I need to say who's saying them. So call me up if I'm you know, you know, shout at me if I'm not calling your name out when I'm talking about things. Um ooh, resin armor armor, Cavman says, uh uses cloth as the medium for the resin to soak into. Interesting idea. I'd never thought of that as an idea. But now I'm thinking of tree sap as in like original resin, that kind of thing. Um, I learned the other day, right, I, I promise I'll draw soon, I learned the other day that um, amber is so light that it floats, um, and as a result, the majority of amber that's harvested is not harvested by digging it out the ground, as I would have presumed, but instead is harvested by catching it as it floats a atop the water. Now, where on earth that's actually happening. I am. I have no idea, or if I'm just talking completely out of my posterior, um, I am not sure. But that's a wonderful idea, and totally feels like it would be at home in some world building somewhere that there are amber farmers, uh, you know, with these long nets uh, trawling for amber that floats atop the ocean. What a fantastic idea. Um, and what have we got here? Anime thoughts. Hey, uh, after ages, hope uh, hope it's good with everybody. Hello there, lovely to see you. Um, Star Childer chainmail, but the chains are shaped like little beast heads. Ooh, that sounds like it would take us seventy three thousand hours to do. But I like the enthusiasm. You draw that, and I will not. But say that I did. Um, Pauldrons says uh, Steve Harrison. Yes, I too. I've been very, very excited. Uh, you know, I've, I've played a lot of World of Warcraft, so yes, lots of ridiculous 
shoulder armor. I see that's what you're talking about now. I see uh, Nico is talking about that. Uh, Leo is waving. Hello, Leo, uh, according to Ollie. Um, at least I can focus on watching. Hello, hello, hello. Um, he's singing a song about you now, Steve, <laughs> apparently. Um, oh, there we go. Yes, Laval says Amber washes up uh, a lot on the beaches of the Baltic states. Uh, interesting. Fascinating. Leo says massive armor. Yes, I think that's probably what we'll end up doing. Let's see what the poll is saying. It's pretty evenly split here. Um, we have 11 votes. Three things are on 27%. So I will wait for the next uh, boost in the poll. Uh, whichever one clinches it there, I will then end the poll uh, so we can figure out what we're doing. Hello. Um, he's looking stored. So... Um, Gabriel, uh, I believe it was, is what Nikolai wanted to be known as. Gabriel, um, uh, the idea of those trees, the tree armor, uh, that can store water and get fatter. How about one made uh, of that wood uh, in which you can store damage and then release it as a bonus action? Oh, kind of like steam and stuff. That would be very cool. Uh, chain mail, chain mail, says Aldrin. All three away. Yes, we will get some very, very cool uh, chain mail. I'm just waiting for one person to, to beat our, our vote here. Chain mail with a wood theme. I can see like chain mail wrapped uh, with thorn snakes. Very cool. The tension here is unbearable, says Star Childer. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if we don't get a deciding vote in the next little bit, then I will, I'll just roll, I guess. Um, does my phone even have enough battery on it to roll a die? Let's see. Oh yeah, we do. We got, we got a little bit. Let's see if I can. Bum, 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 bum. Let's get a dice roll here. Have I updated my apps? Do it, you know what, screw it. Um, okay, so it's the top three here. Okay, Google. Here are some results from a search. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Google, roll a D3, please. You got two. I got two. So light to mid. So we're doing a kind of leather-ish armor by the sounds of it. Oh, oh, Ace, you, what would you what would you have voted for? It's funny how often we go with a nature theme in these things. Are we all elves? Well, I think you guys know that I like an elf. That's probably it. So I'll tell you what, we, there's been a lot of verbal calls. Um, I, I would roll a die, Steve, I would, but that involves me going downstairs and getting all my dice because I was not prepared to be a grown up um, for this. So I'm gonna say, uh, so it's it's mid to light is what we went for. We'll go so like leather adjacent. That doesn't necessarily mean we're making something with leather, um, but it just means that's the kind of the tone, the fit, as it were. Um, so you know. It could still be like wooden armor and that kind of thing. It's just not maybe going to be designed for, uh, you know, a rogue or a, you know, a um, ranger or something of that nature, rather than being like big heavy plate armor, that kind of thing. But it will probably have some big pauldron because I, I like a pauldron. Um, now, so we talked about um, so species specific, mid to light. Um, what species are we making this armor from? Or from, excuse me, uh, for? Who are we making this for? Um, because the culture is going to play a significant part of what this armor is going to look like and what it does and how it moves. Now, there are too many species uh, in D&D for us to kind of um, pick 
basically. Um, so I want to know in the comments who you'd really like to see uh, this made out of. In the meantime, I'm going to sketch a rough sort of outline um, of a humanoid-like form, which I can get rid of if you end up going for like, you know, lizard folk or something um, very uh, peculiar. But just give me some vague concepts and I will, you know, one of the player of all races basically would be ideal um, so that I'm not like Googling all sorts of stuff. The easier, the better basically when it comes to this sort of thing. So um, one, something from, uh, something that a player could easily roll up uh, from fifth edition would be amazing. Um, and then I will have a look in a second once I've vaguely sketched out a kind of humanoid form. I hope you're all having a good evening in the meantime. I've been doing a lot of drawing recently and I've been really enjoying myself actually um, because I have been doing Wes Vemba, a kind of Wes Anderson themed thing on Instagram, which is very, very nice. I'm really enjoying that. It's nice and easy. I get to use my symmetry tool a lot, as you know I love. Um, and yeah, it's just been super chilled in the build up to uh, Dragon December, most of the work for which, I'm not sure if you can see the whiteboard behind me, but that's my kind of progress board, um, most of the work for which is kind of done. Um, Yvonne's going to be doing the kind of editing of those videos, but like the drawing side of things, the research side of things, the filming side of things, they're all done for next month. So it could be very close to being done, basically. So I've just been having fun with my drawing, having a nice kind of chilled out time. Now I've made that neck very skinny. Uh, so Scoosh this down. Got a classic sort of 45 degree angle to some parts here. I'll make sure that we have an arm outstretched so that we can see the fingers if this indeed has any. I don't actually know if the species that we're going to be doing has fingers yet, but we'll see. And then once we've kind of decided that, I can get to drawing and you guys can kind of help me think about what this armor can do magically and, uh, and how it's sort of divided up into its various pieces, because that would be fun. Do you? I think what's very peculiar drawing with two screens at the moment because I've been mirroring my screen. This is the first first time that I've um, divided my screens up into their respective parts, but. Um, Everything feels very wide right now, so it's a little bit disorienting. I know some people were talking about having issues with the parallax between their um, tablet and their screen the other day on the Discord. Um, if you are new to the to the channel, by the way, welcome, hello. Um, but also, um, there is excuse you. There is a very welcoming and very friendly Discord connected to the channel, um, which you are very welcome to join. I don't have the link right now, but I'm sure someone in the chat will be able to link you to the Discord if you'd like to join and say hi. We chat quite regularly, um, and I post all sorts of stuff there, and you, are, you can too. It's a nice place to meet the community. Um, this guy looks very peculiar. Bit more, a bit more chin room. Um, I'm not quite sure if the proportions are right there, but I'm sure it'll come out in the uh, when the armor arrives. Basically, there we go. Right. So let me just save that. And what have we got? Good grief! I've missed a lot of chat already. Um, okay. What have you guys got for me? Okay, so we've got tortles, uh, 
goblinoids of some kind. Uh, and a bit of fancy samurai armors are made from lacquered wood. Interesting, Cabman. Janassi have my vote, says Nico. Halfling, half dwarf Aldrin. Interesting. Um, Steve Harrison uh, says that there's a precedent for that. Um, talking about the wooden armor. We all know half elves, but half dwarves. Yes, I want to make a video, uh, well, a few video, videos, maybe, I don't know, in the new year, talking about sort of like the, uh, what's the right way to say it? The, mixed parentage backgrounds, I guess, like half orc, half elf, half dwarf, so on. Um, and, you know, Genasses, tieflings, all this kind of stuff. Like, don't necessarily just assume that the, the other half is human. It could be, you know, whatever. Um, would be very interesting. Kenku we've got. Uh, you're going for a Goliath, says Steve. Um, Warforged armor that they can incorporate into their body would be interesting. Um, got another Kenku. Sounds good. Um... Elves. Um, we have. Are there any pearl races without fingers? Um, good question, actually. I'd assume that there's probably something like claws or, you know, like little grippy pincers or something. Uh, no null, so I guess Hobgoblin. Um, okay. Uh, Nico uh, said, uh, if it's, I think it's time to insert the obligatory, and then there's just like some glitching going on on my screen. I can't see what your uh, suggestion was there, Nico. It's like almost as if you're being flagged for saying the word gnome. Um, but, you know. Anyway, um, so I'm seeing a few uh, different ideas here. Here's what I will stick in a poll because it seems like there's a few things that are coming up and you guys can vote for whichever you'd like the sound of. So uh, who made this armor? Um, and I've, I saw uh, some hobgoblin. Um, I saw some kinku. Um, what else do we see in there? Um, there were. I saw. New rabbit folk whose name you forgot, Tanner. Uh, yeah, they're called like the Harringan or Harangan. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. Um, uh, no one mentions the G word, word Aldrin. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah, flirting with a band there, uh, Nico. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. They don't, the gnomes don't wear armor, they wear sin. Um, <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. I'm, I'll put I'll put half dwarves, um, half dwarves in there, um, and then one more. We had I've seen null come up a few times. I think, but then the nulls don't actually make armor. They just kind of take armor from existing creatures. So maybe that wouldn't be quite as interesting. I put the Kenko in there. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, the Unearthed Arcana Ooze, ooze um, race. What would Ooze people wear as armor? Yeah, okay. Let, let's stick it in there. Um, yeah, because they're, they're like amoeba people, aren't they? So it's Ooze, uh, ooze folk. I can't actually remember what they're called, but we'll all know what we mean when we say that. Um, there we go. Uh, Reese Jones says, am I late to the party? No, don't worry. Uh, we're taking a disproportionately long amount of time to get started today um, because there are a lot of questions about who built this armor, who it's for, 
what its purpose is, what it can do, all this kind of stuff. And I kind of need to know some of those things before I start even drawing anything. So um, yes, don't worry, you've not missed out on much, just a few decisions basically, but you've not actually missed any uh, drawings and things like that. Um, bum, 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 bum. Ooze part two, says uh, says Nico. Ooze harder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see who we end up going with here. Hobgoblin looks like it's winning right now. Hobgoblin would be very fun. Um, what if a cube has armor, says Captain Dutchman. Oh my god, a gelatinous cube armor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is it just more tiny gelatinous cubes or is it just plates of armor around this wibbly wobbly frame? Um, um, right, we are 50 50 between Kenku and Hobgoblin. Whose folk have just taken uh, their spot, dividing us back into three? So uh, give me a vote that's a tiebreaker and we'll go for that. Whoever it is, That's, the tension is unbearable once again. Um, another three-way tie. I know. Oh, hang on. We have a tiebreaker. Ending poll. Is it still a tiebreaker or is it still up? It should show the results. Come on. There we go. Right. Uh, it looks like Kenku are our winners. Okay. So let's go for over here in the suggestions. Um, let's go for the Kenku then. Okay. So, this is a mid to light, so something with the level of protective power that it would be leather, but it can be made out of anything, uh, designed by the Kenku. Um, interesting that it's a sort of uh, a thief uh, species, but then I like the idea of the Kenku um, being... You know they're more than just thieves aren't they they're they, you know um they do have their own culture or they could so what kind of armor would they make um for a start it's going to have a cool as hell kind of mask or hood or something along those lines half dwarves get no love aldrin unfortunately no uh they do not but uh it's okay we'll make some cool uh cool armor for this kenku and we'll we'll you know We'll do half dwarves or something another time. Um, but yes, okay, let's go for it. So, have a think about how, um, yeah, flight suit, says uh, Talon. Maybe they want to, um, uh, maybe they want to be able to fly like the Arakoa, uh, Ara Ara do you say Arakokra, Arakokra, um, Arakoa, whatever, um, like that. Mostly just stolen stuff they find to make armor or a sort of feather armor, maybe, says Captain Dutchman. Either way, it needs a revised silhouette, doesn't it? Ever so slightly, um, at the very least. So we'll make sure that we have this kind of, like, uh, beakiness available. Uh, over here. Okay. Oh, that's in the suggestions pile. Whoops. I'll change that to the proper sketch layer, wherever that be. Over here. Right. A bit more hunched and stuff like that, but we can kind of incorporate that into the armor as, as time goes on. Either way, let's get started with what these guys might wear. Um, so, so um, I want to hear what way we're going to split this up into three. Um, if you weren't here at the beginning, I was saying that um, Matt Lichtenwalner. Uh, divides his uh, armor into sets um, and has those sets divided into a plus one, plus two, and plus three, depending on how many parts of it you attune to and when, when you find it and so on as a means of having 
player progression. I think it's something that we all um, do to some extent, um, but it sounded like there was a lot of forethought in Matt Lichtenwalder's version of this. And I like the idea of it. So I like the idea of dividing this suit into three parts, each part of the three of this cultural set of Kenku armor um, should in some way um, have their own powers, their own abilities, their own features um, that would make each part of this into something interesting, whether it's a, you know, a cloak, a helmet, the main body part, and also whether it's like gloves or boots. So um, I want to hear what you think this armor should be able to do, um, what it should give someone who attunes to it, whether or not they're a Kenko who's wearing it, you know, um, but also what sort of advantages should it give them and, and in what segments, does that make sense? Whether it's, you know, do the boots let you, you know, jump or slow fall or does a cloak give you the equivalent of wings or, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm going to have a go here at sketching this. So we have like themes are that they are, um, you know, it's a little bit dirty, it's a little bit grubby, it's, it's something that's going to be kind of uh, perhaps ancient um, from their time before being cursed perhaps. Um, or is crafted by them now, but it's probably going to involve a lot of uh, pieces of things that have been stolen and repurposed, uh, because that's their kind of whole deal, uh, at least in, for, in terms of canon law. Um, oh, Leo's drawing along with us, says Ollie, so lovely. Um, oh, Yorick suggests, what about scale mail armor made out of coins? That's an interesting uh, concept. I like the idea of that. Uh, helmet greaves and torso says Steve sounds like a good idea yeah Nico says almost like a progression system that's totally the idea that I get from this as well um, uh, Gabriel says uh, the fact that they are thieves can explain why it's made of leather or wood uh, it's both cheaper and easier to make interesting idea Yes, yeah, definitely. So I think that's the general idea. Steve's hit the nail on the head there. We've been talking, a few people have mentioned, um, uh, and ES level says making out of a mishmash of stolen stuff seems like a really great idea. Um, but Steve says that, um, that this armor should be something that can help them overcome their curse, basically. So maybe it's something that lets them speak more easily. Maybe it's something that also lets them fly. Maybe it's, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, so, I wonder if you can see that actually. Uh, my, uh, there we go. My thing says it's going to power off in five minutes, but it bloody well should not. Um, so, yeah, um, so it needs to be made out of a mishmash of stuff. Inherently, the thing that's coming to mind is um, well, I'm pretty obsessed with the Dishonored franchise, and I love the idea of uh, this person falling from grace, their armor reflecting that. So, maybe it's something very wealthy that has been. Uh, damaged over time um, but the mask in particular was made out of a series of instruments and pieces of metal that were fused together um, clusters of various things that you know can be stretched and unwound to kind of fit around someone's face so maybe yeah like little segments of things that look a little bit um, I don't know like a mishmash of things I feel like a hood is somewhat essential in Kenku armour Kenku always always seem to have hoods and I feel like if there's not some religious significance to their hoods, I don't know why they would have it, but I always see Kenku wearing hoods, and I like the idea of it, so I'm going to include a hood in my design today, um, it's because it suits rogues and things as well. So yeah, let's have a nice, a nice stretchy kind of uh, Altair-like hood here, going very Assassin's Creed, Dishonored, that kind of deal. Um, what would a crow find on the streets of London that they could turn into a magical suit of armour? Um, and what would that do for them? I feel like having a, a little like Altair bit here as a nod is a good call. We'll come to what the mask itself actually looks like in a second, because I feel like that's going to be a really big part of this. Um, I feel like... Have a kind of what's their, their kind of silhouette going to be? It's very jagged, it's very damaged. I like the idea of coins being sewn into it somehow. So maybe if we had a kind of 
uh, like a, a V kind of silhouette to it kind of says jagged to me um, and it would also tie into this hood section here so maybe that wraps around as a kind of scarf maybe I need to pick apart the the elements of this and see what we're going to end up with the hood should wrap around this here almost like a poncho perhaps have a bit of a billow which I think is going to turn into something cape like don't you I think um, something that uh, drapes down into maybe two things um, that could toughen up into uh, wings that help them glide maybe oh actually there's an idea there is an idea what if it ties to the greave so it's like a hood a hood that kind of ties a bit Batman like into their um, into their greave yeah not greaves wrist armor gauntlety things my brain's not working you know what I mean um, and when they spread their arms it allows them to glide perhaps so that kind of thing would be pretty interesting um, someone will know someone will know what I'm talking about um, cobble, yeah Reese Jones says like it was cobbled together uh, the mask I mean um, and also has that kind of Assassin's Creed hood yes definitely um, oh Nico says um, uh, coins throughout the ages uh, or from different kingdoms would be very very cool yeah I absolutely love that um, um, Aldrin says finding a way to make the hood armoured would be lush definitely yes love an armoured hood um, it is a very underutilised thing but definitely has some real uh, precedence in the world so I think that's a very good call uh, I think definitely making this uh, kind of uh, cow like wing thing so it's, it's nice and loose when they're walking but if they were to stretch their arms all the way out it would like become it would fan out and become something that would perhaps magically uh, guide their fall so I'm gonna definitely go for some kind of feather patterns on the inside here whether or not it's actual feathers or if it's something that makes up feathers maybe it's like shards of metal or something like that. that's maybe how we get your chainmail effect if it's like uh, bits of broken metal or something like that that take on the form of uh, wings on the inside here um, on the inside of this cloak I like the sound of that a lot um, braces Reese Jones yes uh, Nico braces thank you all of you uh, Steve braces is the word I'm looking for I'm gonna carry on this V theme in the uh, braces which is the word that I was searching for here let's see um, now maybe if we have I'm trying to think culturally what would be useful for one of these creatures maybe if it fans out here am I just making basically making bird Batman uh, I think I probably am um, but you know what let's go for it I think I think making this kind of thing jagged perhaps is a good call they have unarmed strikes don't they uh, with their talons I believe so that seems like a good call um, what else have we got here I'm getting I am the night vibe says Nico yes absolutely uh, horn turned around for the face mask uh, like uh, one of those hearing oh okay like one of those hearing system horns okay yeah no I like the sound of that that sounds pretty damn cool um, Kazman uh, ring Ring arm bracelets can also be used. Very, very cool. Um, body covering claw spur boots and some kind of beaked helmet. Definitely beaked helmet is 100% going in here. Um, Yorick says, this reminds me of an NPC I plan to use in the future who is a Vidalcan who gets around with a mimic as clothes uh, that they can use to grow wings. Sounds very cool. Um... Uh, Gabriel says the armor has an 
high rune on it. Uh, whenever someone is in the line of sight of the wearer, it uh, marks them and the wearer can perfectly speak in their voice um, and can morph to look like them. Ooh, that sounds very, very cool. I definitely like the idea. Um, oh, Aldrin's got to go to Curse of Strad. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I like the idea of kind of maybe like Skyrim, like you know when you're being observed would be a very interesting thing. Um, running o Oviraptor um, says... Imagine they combine the build of dwarven chest plates with the flexibility of elven armor. Uh, that would be a really cool idea. Yeah, very, very nice. I like the idea of that. So, stolen bits of other armor and other people's clothes and things like that seems like a really interesting idea here. So, we have an opportunity to kind of look into uh, what these guys would find cool, what they would steal um, from around various parts of the city. Um, so I'm thinking uh, that we've got some maybe heavier heavier boots and things like that would be pretty interesting. Um, and lots of nice chain mail. And I need to make these out of various different parts and various different things all kind of sewn together. Uh, maybe there's bits of ceramic in here and things like that that they've kind of taken from broken plates and discarded things. Uh, but I like the idea. Oh yeah, they have exposed toes, don't they? So that's no good to them. They would definitely need to have, um, if it's designed for them anyway. Someone mentioned spurs as well, so maybe something spur-like is a good idea. Um, and it can tie to their little feetsies with some rings here. We can have some leather here. Um, what else have we got here? This armor sounds like the biggest melting pot. Absolutely, it's definitely going to be a big melting pot here. Um, uh, Cavman says, uh, potential bonus effect for the talons for boots. Uh, Corvids will uh, ride larger birds of prey to harass them. So perhaps bonuses to ride large flying creatures um, like the, like dragons and griffins and things like that seems like a really interesting idea. Um, oh, Steve says, imagine something that means that the DM has to roll their perception check in front of the player. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of that, definitely. Hi, Moonring. Uh, don't know. Uh, don't worry, you're, you're not missing out on too much. We have just started. We're making a suit of armor for a Kenku um, who... Um, this armor is going to sort of deal with a lot of the afflictions that the curse of being a kenku uh, would allow, but also things, uh, it's made out of things that a kenku would find around a city, for example. So, um, yeah, we're going to be going to be finding all sorts of interesting stuff uh, to put into this armor. If you have suggestions and ideas, please let me know. Uh, one thing that I find really interesting about armor that's supposed to look like it's been... Um, uh, cobbled together is asymmetry so having like I think having a big shoulder pad here for example I think is going to really make this uh, stand out as uh, maybe I didn't plan this suit of armor super well or maybe it does something specific that I wanted to include um, but it's not you know a part of the armor as a whole so I'm going to definitely include a bit more leather and stuff over here to tie this armor in. And then we can have a bit of a kind of ring here that ties this onto the suit. And that tells me that our belt should start around here somewhere. Um, we can start working on little bits like that. So we have a little shoulder pad here that's maybe gonna have our coins. Um, and the coins should definitely be a big part of this so I'm gonna have that sort of come down here all these sewn together coins maybe another uh, band like that which comes down over here to add more of this silhouette in fact actually yes we should definitely do that 
So it looks like they have a big tail, like a big, um, what do you call it? A big starling's tail, maybe. Keeping that kind of V vibe, let's maybe split it as well. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay. So these are all going to be coins, um, and we can have a bit more kind of here. And I think we need some sort of uh, leather or something like that over here, some padding that's going to provide some kind of protection on their legs, because at the moment they're quite exposed on the legs. Not quite sure what that's going to be yet, but it's a good idea to kind of uh, get that as a part of the silhouette. Um, and I think I'm going to bring this over the hands because they're likely going to be uh, sticking their hands into places where they shouldn't belong. So maybe some kind of protection from the kind of trap aspect of, of a hand here. Now the helmet's going to be an interesting part for sure. We need to make a kind of cobbled together uh, Kenku armoured uh, mask type deal. So what's that going to look like? Let's say so it's going to have some beak armor. It's going to have some. What are we going for? Something that would allow them to speak when they can't usually, and something that allows them to see certain things. So maybe it is going to cover up a lot of their face. Um, it's got to be made out of various pieces of things. So maybe it's got a kind of uh, glass eyes. I'm, I'm nervous of doing the whole uh, plague doctor mask thing because it's been so overdone. Um, but uh, maybe if there's kind of like a voice chamber thing here um, that would speak on someone's behalf and we can have some little glass things here wouldn't look too much like a plague doctor maybe maybe let's see i think we're getting somewhere i think we're getting somewhere for sure they have their own talent so i don't think they'd arm their fingers um but largely speaking i think we've got some good reference details here I'm going to sharpen this up ever so slightly um, while I read some of what you guys have been talking about. Um, so, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh, Artisan Binks says, how do you? This looks fancy. Hello, Artisan Binks. I was, in, I was watching your stream yesterday. Um, Artisan Binks is on Twitch, uh, is another artist who does a fantastic series called GeoSketcher which is where he plays kind of GeoGetter and uh, goes around the world, but also draws some of the things that he finds there. So highly recommend checking out um, uh, uh, Artisan Binks um, if you get a chance. Um, Leo is now going to bed, says Ollie. Um, uh, you're gonna read some more Lord of the Rings, fantastic. Um, definitely do some interesting voices for Leo. Uh, Ollie, thank you so much for being here. Um, uh, next is going to be the 100th anniversary of the Nosferatu, says Yorick, okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. The mask can be balanced on top of the beak, says Captain Dutchman. Yes, I like the sound of that, actually. Um, that's a really nice idea. Maybe kind of using straps and things to kind of uh, work on this armour. I'm... The interesting part is going to be making this armor look like it's been fabricated out of various different parts. Someone said like some interesting dwarven bits and some interesting elven bits all kind of like sewn together. I like the sound of that a lot. Um, uh, what if the beak armor does the voice changer uh, that you recommended but also has a hidden compartment that uh, had deadly poisons at the tip of the beak? Sounds very interesting. I like the sounds of that. Uh, Arthur Mink says, what about a retractable metal scale visor that folds down over the face and beak? Sounds very, very cool. I like the sound of that, especially if it's something that we can kind of like lift up or retract and things like that. And we'll see how I can tie that in. That'd be very fun. Mm -hmm. 
Righto, okay. Let's go for this. Let's see what I can come up with. And let's faff around, I suppose. Um, let's get rid of this body sketch. Because that's a little distracting now. And I'm going to need a colour palette. And thankfully, I can do that over here. Um, so I'm going to need a wide sort of... I want it to be in some way cohesive, but not too much. And I think... Ooh. Blue and gold or amethyst, guys? What are you thinking? Um, I will stick with a pole out here. So, colours. Blue, gold. Ah. The B's not working for me on this new keyboard. Blue and gold or... Uh, I can't spell amethyst, so I'm just going to say purple. Um, ooh, interesting. Maybe finding a doll's mask uh, was the thing that started this whole project. That is hideously unsettling. Um, I kind of love it. Well done, uh, Steve. That's a great idea. What a truly horrifying concept. And it's going straight in. Um, I love that a lot. So we can have little bits of doll's mask up here, maybe. As part of this connecting area. Purple all the way. Yeah, purple seems to be winning quite fiercely right now. Yeah. Screw it. Let's go for it. Let's go for a nice poiple. Um, which I can do over here. <laughs> um, you're going to see the secret of how I get all my colour palettes, which is just go on Pinterest and then find someone who knows more about colour theory than me and then use it. Um, so how do I do that? Do I oh, double screening it? I'm, I'm, I'm a pro gamer, guys. I've got two screens right now. I'm cool AF. Are you, do you feel... Uh, privileged to be a pal with someone who's so freaking cool as to have two screens. I feel I feel like a youth. Uh, there we go. Right, okay, we've got a cool colour palette there, and I've not saved in ages, so I'm going to do that. Um, okay, right, what are you guys saying in the chat? There we go. Uh, purple all the way, yes. Right, okay, I've not missed out on anything. Okay, so let's go for um, let's have a base for this stuff. So um, let's start with the leather parts, or you know, uh, the clothy parts. Clothes, go. Um, We'll see what I can manage here. So I reckon, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking the sound of that. Um, go for a nice chunky brush and start working out the majority of this body section, I think. Um, so I'm not really gonna have many clothes up there. But we will here. We'll start over here and have this nice beefy section. I keep getting distracted by my own screen up there. It keeps showing like a nice bright light. Wonderful and distracting. Um, let's go for a bit of these over here. And we'll do some sort of like fragments of cloth all kind of like being stripped bare and being torn because we don't want this to look too neat and nice and put together we want this to be you know it's, it's a kenku's armor it's it's been patched together and it's going to be there's going to be some holes in it you know well loved but well loved by a kenku 
I'm not going to say he's a street urchin. We're not going to stereotype people here. But they have dubiously acquired various parts of this armour. And that's just what their cultures like. They, they like a bit of that. They're the lost and found of the D&D universe. As opposed to Nulls, who are the lost and found, only they choose to end people's lives in order to find lost things, you know? So, it's all good. It's all good. We've got to love a kinky. And its armour may not necessarily be specifically for kinkus. It was just made by kinky. Um, so, it might be that somebody else picks this up and finds it really useful. Uh, and we hope so. Maybe adds a bit of armour to it each time it changes hands. Okay, a bit more of this kind of damaged fabric at the bottom here to show that we're not at the end of our uh, the end of our pieces here. <laughs> I'm just going to sort of make the bulked out shapes essentially of what this armor might look like and then I'll come back and do details afterwards uh, so we can make a few extra holes in various bits um, there we go saying to it. Uh, <laughs> getting hot flushes over here, so pro. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm just so so pro, what can I say? With my with my two screens, I'm a big boy. Um can tell someone's been watching Arcane. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely loving Arcane. I do need to get around to suing them obviously for stealing my name, but um, you know, that that that'll go well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's absolutely amazing. If you guys are uh, are new to Arcane, not Arcane Forge, but Arcane, the TV series, the League of Legends uh, TV series. I've only watched one episode, but I really love the art style. Very sort of uh, like dishonored concept art, I suppose. Um, and it's very like my own homebrew campaign world. It's very steampunky and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So definitely worth uh, definitely worth a watch. It's got loads and loads of character. Really love it. Really, really love the the kind of movement and motion in it. Actually, it's, I, I think um, a friend of mine, uh, Kit, who um, Arslan Binks will know, uh, said very eloquently that it's like uh, moving concept art, which I think is definitely the way to describe Arcane the TV series. Um, very very nice show so far at least um i don't actually know if the plot's any good i just watched like one episode and was like ooh, pretty um so i've not really thought about it too much but if you guys are watching let me know i'd love to know your thoughts on it In fact, if you have any more recommendations of things to watch, I've been thinking about sort of guilty pleasure watching recently. Because there's, you know, there's like the cerebral things that you might watch with your partner, and there's the, you know, veg out in front of the TV things that you might watch together and all this kind of stuff. But when you're alone, when, you know, you just want to watch some trash, or you want to watch some stuff that you know your partner's not interested in. I know Yvonne's not hugely into anything animated, basically. Um, it takes a lot to kind of get her into that kind of thing. So Arcane is very much one of my, what I would call guilty pleasure watches, despite the fact that it's actually genuinely very good. But if you have any more suggestions like that, I'd love to hear what you're watching right now as well. Um, 
Richard says the story is really good. Um, that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm so glad. Um, yes, Alexander Binks. Um, moving concept art is a great descriptor. Kit is very, very good at that. Um, yes, very much. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Okay, so if I work on some of the. Yeah, I think the kind of cloak and stuff next. Cloak. Command G. Also cloak. Okay. I'm gonna go for a, the kind of um, the royal purple for this one. I can only think of these. I don't know about you. If you're a mini painter as well, um, I always think of these in terms of. Um, like <laughs> miniature paints and their ridiculous names so miniature paints always no matter what company you get them from always have absolutely absurd names and I love them so much um, part of it like early on maybe if you're buying them in like the 90s or something there would have been like some toxic masculinity stuff to it you know kind of like you're not painting with black you're painting with Vanta Midnight or you know that kind of stuff um, less so much now, but now the descriptor is like, how is like, how do I let people know that they are painting something to do with war? Um, so all the descriptors are like, um, you know, obliteration orange, and you know, like murder red, and all this kind of stuff. I love it. I love paint names, but also I buy Vallejo paints. Um, so a lot of them are in Spanish. And uh, they are like there's so many D and D characters that have come out of just the names of these paints. But right now I am painting in in what is known as hexed lichen earlier on, and now this is kind of more of a royal purple that probably has a kind of you know cosmic pur cosmic purple horror um, or something like that. Um, but <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, the ridiculous paint name. Someone has an absolute field day making the names for miniature paints, is all I'm going to say. Uh, and if I ever go silent on Arcane Forge, you know it's because I've got a job of making up ridiculous names for miniature paints. Um, especially if you see Cosmic Horror Purple uh, turn up. Eldritch Brown. Uh, let's see. What have we got here? Um, I recommend Ben 10 and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, it says uh, because I'm, I'm sorry uh, I always Gabriel it takes me like 10 seconds to think of your name every time because it's so different from the, the name on here I'm sorry uh, but I will go for that um, uh, oh, Nico says if I was to name my own paints what would they be well as a lot of people have always <laughs> judged um, uh, this one guy was really upset about it I tend to use a lot of pink and I use a lot of green in my drawings so I think we would need like uh, mega magenta or um, you know oh god like flesh horror pink uh, and uh, <laughs> things of that nature for, for my own colours I need to get like gibbering mouther in there somehow uh, because you know I love my uh, flesh horror um, if I put that above that layer yes I have okay that's cool that's good just checking just checking I know what I'm doing I'm a proper artist I'm a professional I'm not just making this up as I go along for sure um Maybe we can have this wrapped around in a nice kind of band around this wrist. That's how it connects. I feel like we should have lots of little segments of fabric all kind of uh, tied together here. Like a kind of Frankenstein's monster of various different sections. Oi. Um, Pink Terror says Cavman. Yes, Eldritch Brown absolutely would definitely be in there. Uh, extra gross names from the 80s and 90s too. Snot Green. Yes, Snot Green. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know if you've just made that up or if that's a genuine one, but I feel like it's genuine. That sounds like exactly the kind of thing that you'd get. Um, uh, so apropos of nothing, what turned out to be an advert for, I think, 
uh, in this strand. Um, I was both, it was both magnificent and utterly horrifying by the end. Uh, it was like a three minute long film. Oh, interesting. Bubbling flesh pink, says Iron Crown. I love it. Um, yes. I, I think Eldritch Brown is like one of those colour shifting paints that like it's normally brown and then when you look at it in the wrong light it turns out that it's actually the colour of pure evil. Goodness knows what that is. But yes. It will have no mercy from Eldritch Brown. Also, Eldritch Brown, now that I'm saying it, sounds like, um, I don't know if you get this in the States or not, I don't know if it's like a multinational co company, but there's this very, very fancy, way, way overpriced, um, like, men's fragrance and kind of soap company, I guess, you know, um, kind of like Lush, but for people with too much money, called Molten Brown, um, that always is a hilarious name to me, um, but uh, Eldritch Brown um, is just making me think of a kind of like Halloween version of Molten Brown. Um, but yeah, what colours would you go for? Would you? What would you, what would you make for your own uh, ridiculous paint names? I'm, the most absurd, the better. Um, Losing my mind green. I do love this brush so much. Um, it's a very kind of like graphite textured brush, but uh, it does cause a lot of problems when it comes to like filling things in. Because you can hit the um, paint bucket twice and it fills all these little gaps in, but then it also extends out to the outermost range, at which point everything starts to look really pixelated, which is not fun. And I want to keep the very outer outline but I don't want the inner outline, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Um, am I, once again, talking out my posterior, or do you guys know what I'm talking about here? Those of you who, who use Photoshop and stuff will know. I'm not sure if it translates to things like Procreate and all that kind of stuff. I'm new to using an iPad, um, but I'm not using one now, thankfully. But I'm starting to get the hang of it a little bit when it comes to, to painting and drawing. Um, cosmic Horizon Purple, Oozing Wound Pink, Malaria Yellow, Bubonic Black, says, uh, says, uh, says Nico. These are absolutely fantastic colours. Props to you. Um, you're going to be stealing my job at the ridiculously named paint company soon. Those are really good. Um, Eldritch Brown would be a band, says Ithabal. That's very, very good. Yes. Um, Let's start that band. I can play no musical instruments, but let's start a band called Eldritch Brown. Um, what about a wash? Burnt oil, dark tone. Love it. Um, what if the paint is called Colour Out of Space? Oh, excellent. I very, yes, good Lovecraft reference there. 10 out of 10. My word. Did anyone see the Colour Out of Space, the Nicolas Cage version? Because um, I've never actually seen it. I root, I was trying to. I don't know where you're actually supposed to be able to see it, right? Maybe Americans see it, can see it, and I need a VPN in order to see it in the UK, right? But an H.P. Lovecraft story in which Nicolas Cage is the protagonist, I can only imagine how that would be. It would be like watching a car crash in real time. I... As a bit of trash for the past couple of days, I, I watched a lot of Nicolas Cage films, basically just looking at um, Ghost Rider and Ghost Rider 2, which are two of the most ludicrous films I think I've ever um, allowed to cause my eyes to bleed. Um, but they are just beautiful in their eye-watering stupidity. 
um, and I had a lot of fun watching them. Um, so I would love to see Nicolas Cage's take on uh, on some Lovecraft. You know, like that's that's got to be that's got to be beautiful. That's got to literally be like seeing some sort of old elder thing and having your mate, brain melt from the inside out. It's stunning. He's a beautiful, beautiful actor. Or over-actor, I suppose. But yeah. It's that and Jason Statham. If they ever teamed up him and Jason Statham, I think like the world would end. That's how you put a singularity on this planet. Um, it's just too much. Too much everything. Um, you can do the guitar, ukulele, and vocals. Okay, you've already started Eldritch Brown, uh, uh, Nico. Um, Hammer Blood Red, um, in the honour of, of Hammer Films. Uh, greenish Purple, says Cavman. Uh, are they fun bad or just bad? So, a eh, good question. I would say they are probably fun bad. Um, the first Ghost Rider film is uh, is fun bad for sure. I, I think um, the second Ghost Rider film might just be bad, um, but it's one of those things that it's like it's kind of fun to read the reviews and stuff because people can have a lot of fun with that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I I like the idea of it. Um, I I. I would still say that it's 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 more in the fun bad category than just bad bad, probably. But maybe just stick with the first Ghost Rider unless you're in that particular mood, you know. Um, it's definitely um, a film for you know you had a couple of drinks, you're chilling out with a couple of friends, um, you're not taking life too seriously, that kind of thing. But it's beautiful. There's, there's, I, I've never seen more overacting from Nicolas Cage than in Ghost Rider Two because it's very clear that um, there's a lot of kind of like jerky head movements and like really over the top special effects, um, and it's fun. It's genuinely a fun watch. Um, but it's so clear that even though you can't see his face, it's very obviously Nicolas Cage being Ghost Rider in most of the film. Um, and I did hear that Nicolas Cage was actually responsible for funding the second Ghost Rider film because he wanted to be a superhero again. I know that one of his sons is called Kal-El Cage, uh, the real name of Superman. Um, so he's a big uh, superhero fan. Um, oh, uh, Nico says, I don't think I heard what you thought of Dune, Josh. I absolutely loved um, the Villeneuve Dune. I think it's one of the... Um, most beautiful films I've ever seen. I'm not sure if it's one of the best or not, um, mostly because it's the intro to a series. So, you know, it, it's... Um, I feel like I'm selling it short. It is it's really, really good. It's absolutely magnificent. It's beautiful. It's iconic. Um, I did not think that it was Hans Zimmer who did the soundtrack, um, but it is, and it's absolutely incredible, but it's so different from how Hans Zimmer usually does a soundtrack. Um, it's just, it was absolutely magnificent. I, yeah, I'm going to see it two, three, however many times I can. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant. Um, I would say it's one of the best films I've ever seen, but it's not, like, story-wise, it's not had a chance to do that in a single film, basically. It's telling... It's very clearly the first instalment in a trilogy, so it's not it's not the best standalone film, um, but in terms of the way it looks, it's very close to like it's got that kind of Mad Max energy. Um, it's very like one of my favourite films called The Fall, um, which is similarly like way over the top, uh, huge sets and like it's just yeah absolutely magnificent. There's not a Every scene in it is so meticulously magnificent um, that just if you were to listen to it with the sound off, it would still be one of the best films ever. Um, but um, yes, I I think it's in one of my you know top top ten favorite films of all time probably just 
But then again, I am biased by novelty, as we all know. Uh, I have ADHD, and, and with that comes, like, oh my god, new thing, so excited. Um, so I'll be interested to see if I still feel that way after a second view, um, but I really liked it. I think it's really groundbreaking, even though it's a film that's been done before, and it, even though it's uh, a very, very old set of books. But thankfully, it's way less misogynistic than the source material, which is great. Um, and it's... Um, yeah, I, I think they've done some really magnificent things with it. Um, so, yes, looking forward to part two, for sure. Um, come on now, why are you, why are you doing this? Ooh, let's close open the window over here. Right. Let's save again. What are you guys saying to it? Um, Super Inframan is on the best fun bad movies ever, says Yorick. That sounds very, very interesting. Uh, yes, the ball has to go, so uh, thank you very much for being here. Very, very cool. Thank you. Um, Yeah, um, yeah, Nico, definitely take your wife to it. If uh, so, I think um, while it's not the same, I would say if your wife inv uh, enjoyed the most recent um, Blade Runner film, um, the uh, God was it two thousand and eighteen, something like that. I hope. Otherwise, my concept of the passage of time is is really. Slipping. Um, if she enjoyed uh, Blade Runner, then yeah, that's my kind of like. It has a similar sort of energy, I guess. It's it's big. It's huge, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's really, really creative and inventive sci-fi. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm I really enjoyed it. Um, but I'm cautious about necessarily saying that everyone would like it because. Is weird for sure. Um, uh, if anyone else has seen it, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear. thing so you don't get stabbed in the neck seems somewhat vital especially if you're hanging about shadowy areas and doing things of ill repute what else have we got here um moon ring says how's the weather um it is dark so i don't know um but it's been very lovely today um Hey Josh, just stepping in for a bit to say hi. How's the stream going? Colby, good to hear from you. It's lovely to see you. Um, yeah, the stream is going very well. We're making some Kenku armor. Very spooky, spooky Kenku armor. Um, and it's going to be made out of all sorts of different bits and bobs. And it's going to allow Kenku to be able to uh, fly or glide at least. Um, and uh, and speak to people and kind of know when they're being seen and watched and so on. If anyone has any more ideas about what they want to put into this armor, I would love to hear it. Uh, but for now, that's kind of what we've got, and it sounds pretty exciting. Lots of bits all over the place. Scrapyard armor, basically. But thematic and powerful at the same time. How are you doing, Colby? What have you been up to? How's life? Hmm. 
I'm liking that this armor is also kind of like a little bit uneven and a little bit, you know, non-symmetrical. I always think a lack of symmetry is the sign of an adventurer. Because you've sort of covered yourself in bits and bobs that you've found. Uh, and armor may not always be made for you, it may not be tailor fit for you, so it might you might have to improvise how it fits on your body and so on. But this even though it was made of mismatched bits of stuff. Definitely was constructed by one or more Kenku for a very specific purpose. It's that kind of cultural heritage armor, as it were. Made with ancient coins from bygone generations, from various towns and cities. Some may be more valuable than the armor itself, but you'd never know, because you'd never take this armor apart it would be it's too cherished what have we got here uh pajama Oh, oh, it's Crafty. Hello, Crafty. How are you doing? Welcome back. I hope your class went well. Um, Steve Harrison says, I think that something linked to what Josh said about being seen in a computer game would be good. Um, yes, yeah, so we were talking about like the Skyrim stealth system and whether or not that would sort of apply um, to these guys, to this armor, this kind of Kenku armor, would that be a useful thing? And someone suggested as well that maybe that would manifest in the form of like forcing the DM to make perception rolls out in the open for this particular character at the very least, um, which I think is a fantastic idea. I think that's a really nice idea, that kind of like meta knowledge. Um, that maybe you just get a heads up when someone detects you because I don't want it to be like an armor of non-detection or something like that, you know, that, that's that's fine, that's cool, that's powerful. Um, but this is about, you know, the practical side of things. What would someone who is already a thief expect in this armor if they could make it out of junk? Maybe something that would allow them to know if they are detected and to, to make a getaway rather than just being non-detection, you know. Because that solves a problem and we like an adventure, which, it's making problems, really, isn't it? So, let's see how we end up. I'm liking the mismatch kind of nature of all the shapes here. There's nothing here that's been forged in one particular forge, it's all bits and bobs. And while it might look cohesive enough in color palette. When we get to all the details of this thing, it's going to be all over the place. There's going to be loads of different sharp angles and different bits of things all fused together to make individual pieces of armor, little bits of little plates of armor and things like that, lots of little coins. I imagine it would make quite a racket actually, unless you knew exactly how to use it. And I think that's maybe why you attune to it. Maybe that's why you attune to this particular piece of armor. Uh, because once you do, you know how to wear it without making too much noise with all these coins all over the place. One of my favorite things ever in a game actually was um, in Fallout 3, I believe it was, when you get access to power armor, you have to train in it because it's like a muscle suit, you know, it has hydraulics in it, it would snap you in half if you tried to just run around in it. So you have to be trained in how to actually wear it and move in it and, you know, let it assist your movements rather than fighting it. Um, so maybe that's what attunement's like for some of these characters. Um, oh, Moonring, thank you very much for the very, very kind donation. That's extremely kind of you, thank you. Um, you've asked me if I've ever played Starfinder, and I've not, actually. Um, I have never played Pathfinder or any variation thereof. Um, I like the sound of Starfinder in particular. I think it sounds like a really good idea. Um, I actually, very foolishly, made my own 
uh, homebrew rules for uh, doing kind of like D&D in space at one point. It took me two years to make. And it was um, a... I mean, it was fine. It was great. It worked absolutely fantastically. But it came um, because I basically, I realized, didn't trust my players to learn a new system when I should have just gone like, hey, Starfinder exists. We should have been playing this. So that was a lesson well learned from me in respecting and trusting my players um, because it took me two years worth of long work when we could have been playing more games of D&D, basically. Um, but I love the idea of it. I've heard really good things as well. Have you played Starfinder? Do you enjoy it? Um, is it just Starfinder, like Pathfinder in space, or is it something more or less than that? Um, let me know. I'd love to love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, what else have we got here? Ooh, Steve Harrison says, um, this is going to sound weird, um, but how about if you could use this armor to make yourself weigh as much as a raven? You could perch on twigs at the uh, very tops of trees. It would look creepy as hell. I do love that idea, definitely. Fantastic. Uh, Colby says, maybe there's some sort of magical sensory power in the armor. If someone else is looking at it, the coins jingle slightly or get too hot or cold. So you automatically know if someone is seeing you or not. And I absolutely love that. It feels very much like... Um, I really loved the necklace in The Witcher being... I mean, surprise, surprise. I really like The Witcher. I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but I really do. Um, I, I go on about it every every bloody time that we, uh, that we have a live stream. But I really love The Witcher. And one of the things I really love about it um, is the fact that his necklace, his magic item that detects magic, and vibrates when you're getting closer to it and things like that. Um, you know, it might make a noise, it might jumble around, it does something slightly different from Witcher to Witcher. Um, but that's a fantastic idea. I love magic items like that. That's not just like, I'm going to tell you the answer to this riddle. Here's this magic item that lets you know exactly what spell's going on. It's just like, no. Cool. You get an idea there's some magic about. That's all you get to know. It's a tool. Um, that's the kind of level of magic that I like. I think I've talked many times about the fact that I'd like to run my campaigns at about street level. Um, I don't really like to go for things that are much more powerful than that because I think it's not the kind of stories that I like to tell. I, I totally get the idea of these huge, like, be all and end all, massive battles and so on. It's not my style, but I totally get why people would enjoy it. Um, but I love magic items like that. A necklace that just rumbles when something's going on uh, is absolutely fantastic. Um, especially, like, in The Witcher. So maybe the coins jingling uh, when magic is close is a great idea. I love that, Colby. Thank you so much. Making some more sort of stolen parts here, some knight's armor that's maybe been bashed and bolted together to make these knees, these knee plates and shin guards. Very excited about getting to the kind of detail stage of this. All right, what have we got here? Um, do you play Animal Crossing? Asks Moonring. I've never played Animal Crossing. Um, I really wanted to, actually. I do have a Switch. Um, but you know what? I've not played many games in a really long time. Um, and I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of liking that. Um, it's... I've been spending a lot more time on my other hobbies, like, you know, painting and things like that. Um, oh dear, didn't connect the line there. 
Um, yeah, so I, I, I was trying to build a gaming PC at the start of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, with the whole uh, price gouging of... Um, of uh, graphics cards and things like that, I wasn't able to complete it. Which was a huge shame for me. Um, you know, I, you know, gaming is one of my very favourite hobbies. But um, I've been all right with it recently because I've just been doing more painting and things like that. So um, gaming has kind of slipped away from me as a hobby a little bit, at least. Um, but I do like the sound of Animal Crossing. It sounds like a nice, relaxing, fun thing to do. Um, although I do get the opposing opinion that it's like doing chores as well. So I don't know. I don't know if it would be my kind of thing or not. It, it sounds like it. It seems very sweet, which you know I like. Um, but at the same time, you know, I struggle doing the chores that I have in real life. So would it be the kind of thing I enjoy? I don't know. Um, do you guys play Animal Crossing? Do you enjoy it? Is it like a lot of work? Is it kind of a grind or is it nice and fun and easy and chilled out? Um, I do like the idea of going fishing in a capacity where I'm not actually hurting any fish would be amazing, you know, because um, that was one of the things before I went vegan that, like, I really wanted to do some fishing, um, but afterwards I was like, mm, I can't really think of a nice way to do that. Um, so, yeah, if it if it lets you do some fishing without hurting fish, I, I would be up for that, actually. Um, I think that's kind of like a big part of the game, so, yeah, that would be cool. But otherwise, um, I don't know. I don't honestly know. It looks very cute, like I say. Um, and who doesn't want to be in debt to a um, tiny raccoon boy? Or tanuki boy, whatever you want to call him. But he's very cute, Tom Nook. Um, even though he's also, you know... In trapping people in the uh, with the power of capitalism. Um, right. Uh, Kevin says there are a few things about the Witcher world building. That's great. Mm -mm -mm. Excuse me. Um, but your favorite, uh, one of your favorite bits is how much uh, research planning is needed to fight monsters yes i absolutely love that definitely um i have an unforgivable truth um to me says steve harrison i don't like the witcher i want to i love that sort of thing but i found it almost unplayable cd project red uh set some very strange controls to that game on pc i'm totally with you when i first started playing it i found it very very difficult to play uh and almost uh quit playing it i'm glad it did not in the end um, but yeah, I totally get it. Um, it's not for everybody. Um, I would recommend reading the books though, Steve. Uh, you might get into them. They're all short stories as well, which I found as a dyslexic person very, very good. Um, and uh, you know, obviously there's the TV series as well, which is which is brilliant. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend. Um, Arsene Binks, uh, I've inspired you to do the Kenku. Yes, please. Maybe you could draw the Kenku who wears this armor. That'd be fantastic. Um, let me know when you're done and maybe, uh, I don't know if you're in our Discord or not, I think you might be. Um, but yeah, we have a, a totally open Discord, feel free to post it in, the, in our Discord art section, I'd love to see that. Um, uh, Oh, uh, Yorick says, uh, no, you've not played The Witcher. Uh, not The Witcher. What do you call it? Animal Crossing, we're talking about. Um, but uh, you've started marathoning the Halo games. Very good choice. They're very cool. Um, oh, Moonring's got to go. Thank you very much for being here, Moonring. Um, Um, but yes, I'm getting sidetracked with uh, with not doing my drawing. So where was I? Um, I need to do some leather bits by the looks of it. Um. Already done that. Yeah. Oh, gee. There we go. 
Plus. He says the armor has the same color scheme as Skeletor. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, definitely dealing with some some skeletal goodness in this one. Uh, lavender. No, we need a we need a sharper pink for the leather. I think. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but I'm also not mad about it. It's yeah, that's going to cut across this in a very nice way. Chaos, you're here, man. You've taken my armor and made it for crows. Um, oh, God, where's my brain? I'm sorry, guys. Um, Has anyone read Fizzbands yet? I have completed my review, which will be my first video of Dragon December, um, which is probably the longest video I've ever filmed because I just opened it and started reading it and reviewing it as I was kind of filming it. Um, I enjoyed a lot of things in it, but obviously I can't spoil my review either. Good grief. But I want to know if you guys have read it, if you own it, um, if you found useful things in it. Uh, I would be very, very interested to hear your thoughts um, while I'm not allowed to share mine currently. Um, but uh, it was an interesting read, and my physical copy just arrived uh, yesterday, actually, which has some beautiful artwork in there. Um, so I'm very glad to have that. But yeah. Also, really looking forward to Strixhaven as well, whenever that comes out. I keep getting told that you can pre-order that now, but I can't seem to pre-order it. I can't seem to pre-order a physical copy, at least, um, which is a real shame. I need to go and check out some local game shops and see if I can actually physically pre-order it there, because that one, Magic School, you know, that seems, that's very, very up my alley, for sure. Um, is there any more leather I wanted to put on this? like there was. Let's go back a little bit and see. Uh, that'll probably do us for the base flats, I think, at least. Yeah, yeah that'll do. Right, um, what are you guys saying to it? Um, uh, oh, Artisan Bink says, I don't think I'm in the Discord. Where can I find it? I will send you a link to it, unless uh, one of you lovely people would like to um, uh, post the link to it somewhere. Um, uh, Nico would like to recommend the Shin Megami Tensei series and Persona series as far as really nice designs and interesting gameplay. Personally, um, those two uh, are the best, wonderful. Um, <laughs> uh, weird Josh is the best, Josh. I very much appreciate that, but I think you're being very generous. Um, uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, Yorick says, early on in Wesvember, you mentioned um, potentially doing bust commissions. Is that still a possibility in the future? Yes, um, I am absolutely planning on doing that. In the new year, um, I need to figure out how many I can do. But so far, I have been having great fun with Wesvember, and the illustrations have not been taking me a ludicrous amount of time. Um, so I'm seeing if I can do 30 you know, busts in a month. And so far they've not been causing me too much pressure. So I probably wouldn't take on like 30 bust commissions of a month, um, but I would probably take on, you know, something like 10 just to see how it is. Or, you know, you know, I'll have a chat with my far more logical wife about um, how much work I can take on. Um, but 
We'll see. I would really like to. I'd really, really like to. Because um, they seem like something I could manage. It's also a matter of how I would do them. Because my gut tells me I should do them through Patreon. But then the Patreon system is set up in a very peculiar way. That you kind of... You can have one-off payments. But you can also have... You know, most people get like a... You know, it's like a scaling system. So you, you get what the previous level of patron got and some new stuff based on what you got. I think I might want to make these separate and I'd probably do them through Kofi or something like that. Um, but we'll think about it. Um, and it's something that I'm eager to do. I've wanted to go back to commissions for a really long time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tentatively yes. I, I would say almost certainly yes, I'll be doing commissions of some kind next year, which will break the streak. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, not read, but seen the review, says uh, Ruth Jones about fizz bands. Um, Iron Crown says, I've not bought it yet, but you might. The Dragonborn were reworked very well. They were indeed. Uh, they're a lot more fun, for sure. Um, Nico says I enjoy the gem dragons and the new spells but I feel like it gives more open ended designs for ideas for characters yeah fair dues um, Yorick says what do you think of the Legend of Zelda series I absolutely love the Legend of Zelda games although in truth I've only played uh, one of them on Nintendo 64 when I was little and I've been playing Breath of the Wild a lot um, which I love. I think Breath of the Wild is one of my all-time favourite games. It's an absolutely beautiful piece of art, um, I would say. Um, let's get rid of this boy. And we can reduce the visibility for that ever so slightly, so I can start working on textures. So we've got the codes here, which are like that. Um, and I think, I think, I want to do, where have you there? And we'll get a nice little clipping mask going on here. And get some nice new gritty brushes. A little bit of fluff into these, but yeah. So I'm going to have a fairly um, considerable rebrand um, in the new year, um, and with that will come things like commissions and stuff like that. Um, probably. Well, yes. I'm I'm going to say yes because commissions, but I don't want everyone to get too excited um, straight off the bat because I don't know how they're going to quite work yet. But, uh, yeah, basically, uh, it's going to be really fun. It just kind of revitalize the channel a little bit and uh, how it works, what kind of content I do, um, things of that nature. But it should be only positive to you guys. I should be only adding things, not taking things away. So um, hopefully it'll be very fun. I'm very excited about it, for sure. Um, should we have some kind of pattern on these bits of cloth? Um, I feel like if they were stolen from bits of curtains or something like that, it would be very fun. So why don't we do a bit of something like that? I wonder, we don't want it to be too oppressively obvious. Oh, I know. Oh, yes, this says curtains to me. Um, some pinstripes. the visibility of this and not do it over the top and we can get on working some line work um, 
Iron Crow uh, make their breath weapon start as a 2d10 and done. I don't quite reckon, I don't quite understand what we're talking about. Maybe I've missed out. Um, oh no, Iron Crow, you're talking to someone called us. Sorry, my bad. Um, the caffeine has well and truly left my brain at this point, so uh, that was my bad for reading that poorly. Uh, I thought we were talking about an animal called an iron crow, which is very cool, by the way. We should totally make an iron crow one one uh, one week. But I didn't recognise it immediately. Um, uh, um, do we have a live stream playlist? Um, Yes, we do. We have a playlist for Magic Item Workshops, and um, I think we might for the regular one, um, regular live stream as well, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. We definitely do for the Magic Item Workshops, so uh, hopefully that'll be uh, useful to you. Um, I like to put everything into a playlist uh, in case someone finds it useful. I can maybe come up with a few patches to put over the top of this in a second. But I like the idea of this maybe being once someone's curtains or a suit or something like that that has been taken purely because it matched the colour scheme of the rest of this stuff maybe. Little bit disjointed, definitely not designed to be a part of this armor, but it has become a part of it regardless. Little holes in it, little patches, little bits and bobs here and there have filled it all in. stuff there we go. I think that's slightly less visible actually there we go lovely what else have we got here um oh paisley yeah good idea cabman um iron crow sounds awesome says artisan, artisan binks um why is June so awesome? Uh, asks Gabriel. Um, in terms of the books or in terms of the new film and things like that? I, well, I mean, it's it's um, a really inventive take on sci-fi. Um, I don't, I don't want to be pedantic and kind of like explain things to you if you already know them. But if you don't know anything about it, um, which I have to I have to assume, I suppose, when, when answering, um, then um, it's, you know, it's, it's a very creative take on sci-fi because it's um, there's no artificial intelligence so there's a lot of biological uh, techno advancements um, um, uh, because there was like a sort of uh, artificially intelligent Revolution, I suppose, basically like something Terminator adjacent uh, happened, um, and now uh, we're all sort of uh, the world has moved on, or the galaxy, I suppose, has moved on from a dependence on um, things of that nature um, to you know upgrade humans to become supercomputers um, and uh, you know morph bodies into more useful shapes and things like that is very peculiar. Um, it's just an interesting take, and it's yeah. I don't know. I don't know quite what's so brilliant about it. Um, but in terms of the visuals of the film and things like that, it's just it's everything's so massive. I feel like 
I'm, I mean, judging by the fact that I'm drawing a, a bright pink Birdman, I think it's it's fairly plain to see that I'm not a huge fan of realism necessarily in my um, entertainment. Um, I like the surreal quite a lot. I think one of my favourite artists of all time is Mobius. Um, and I love, I, I think fantasy looks like fantasy when things seem impossible but are treated in a mundane way. Um, so I really like, for example, um, uh, you know, like doorways and things to just be absolutely massive. Like who's building that? Who knows? Um, but I love the idea when, when something's just absolutely colossally big for no particular reason. Um, it just seems a little bit more fantasy and Dune kind of has that thing in spades, you know? Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's just very beautiful to look at. It's, it's very over the top and kind of just eye-wateringly brilliant to see. Uh, it's very hard to explain, especially while I'm distracted by drawing. <laughs> but it's cool. I, I would recommend it. I, I like it a lot. Um, does anyone have a particular favorite sci-fi series or a sci-fi uh, franchise that they particularly adore? I'd love to hear uh, that as well. Yeah, that's a really good. Um, uh, uh, oh, wow, the chat's moving way too quickly. Um, uh, Colby says, I love the Locked Tomb science fantasy series. Yeah, really interesting. I've heard that before. I've heard people enjoying that, but I, I don't actually know what it's about. Uh, it's, oh, well, there you go. It's all about necromancy uh, as a science, and it's really, really rad. Awesome. I love the idea of that. Neuromancer I've had recommended to me as well. Steve, that sounds really cool. Well, even Dibby's in the chat. I, 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 I thought I saw your um, uh, avatar, um, but I didn't say hi. So, hello. Good to see you. Um, um, I tragically... Uh, have not read in a while, but I recall liking the Lost Fleet series uh, quite a bit, says Iron Crown. Uh, it presented space battles from a realistically tactical view. Oh, that sounds interesting. I really like the sound of that. I love um, well, all of that kind of stuff, really. Um, let me just get on my line work here. Mm -hmm. Get some details in here. Um, some nice acro parts. Make this nice and thin, I think. Let's make this look like metals of various thicknesses various stages of decay and damage, all of which should be in some way beautiful, because why would you harvest and steal something that is, you know, unusable? You'd, you'd look for something that is useful and beautiful and, uh, and in some way mimics the traits that you want to see in your, in your armor, wouldn't you? As a Kenku, I would assume. Someone said a doll's face at some point, so putting something along those lines over here, put it into the armor. I 
do love putting faces into armor in general. I always tend to do that with my dwarves. Very at least a big bearded face somewhere in dwarven armor. I think that's a very typical thing to do um, for dwarves, but it just always looks good. It just it does always suit a dwarf, you know. interesting coming up with Kenku armor with you guys because it's just a part of society in D&D that I would never usually think of and I absolutely love that. I think that's one of the reasons why this community is so great because I don't know like we have ideas for what certain cultures armors might look like but the Kenku are always kind of told like yeah what do they what do they wear what do they steal things they wear like bits and bobs of robes and whatever they're Masters, if they ha if they you know work for mages and stuff like that, whatever they give them, basically, because um, we know that they make good scribes, for example. But it's been interesting already coming up with, you know, what would a kenku value? You know, why why would it make this cultural armor? Um, and indeed, is this the armor of the kenku? Is this like sort of specifically like you know boots of elven kind? Is this you know? Armor of Kenku kind. Who knows? Um, Arthur Binks loves a fantasy series called Septimus Heap. Uh, the series follows the adventures of Septimus Heap, who, as the seventh son of a seventh son, has extraordinary magical powers. Interesting. I've never heard that. Is it kind of comedy or serious? What's the kind of deal there? Um. <laughs> Colby recently watched Tales from the Loop. My word. Uh, fantastic. Have you played Tales from the Loop? Because that, that is a good, good game. Um, a suit of armor made from masks, Colby uh, recommends. Uh, my goodness. Yeah, I suppose if we're going down the, the Legend of Zelda route, um, it would be very cool to do a mask made of masks, wouldn't it? The sort of, uh, you've met with a tragic fate, haven't you? Right, how to make this look like various pieces that are in some way coordinated, but not too much. It's a difficult task. Um, because again, it's like you'd only value things that you wanted to attach to your mask, wouldn't you? But at the same time, they've got to be things that a kinky could easily get a hold of. I'm actually reminded there's this absolutely fantastic exhibit that I really want to see in America that was this uh, this guy who um, was a preacher's son and ended up becoming a um, street sweeper or something along those lines. And he ended up making this absolutely fantastic sort of uh, cult-like church made out of uh, tinfoil and things like that. Um, and it's been taken into, um, what gallery is it? I can't remember. It's one of the one of the bigger galleries in the states, um, but it makes me want to go see it um, because apparently it's quite awe-inspiring, despite literally being made out of like lost goods and um, you know little pieces of bric-a-brac, basically all covered in tin foil, um, held under a, a yellow light to make it look like gold and, and things of that nature. I I love the idea of that sort of stuff. So. That's the kind of thing I want to capture in this armor. That it's like it's all coordinated. If you were to look for, look at it from the from far away, it would look like the most magnificent armor. But if you get up close, it's all various pieces of different things, all kind of welded together and uh, maybe a bit haphazardly uh, dented and crushed and uh, little bits of lost things. message from the crows that there is value in the things that you discard. You 
you guys ever played any Kenku? And if so, what was your favourite Kenku character that you played? of different things in there. Right. What have I missed in the chat? So much. Um, right, still planning to play a uh, masterless assassin Kenku, according to Captain Dutchman. Uh, a murder of trinkets, suggests Colby Monroe. Um, uh, Iron Crown says, I've played a Kenku artificer smuggler whose goal was to build himself a pair of wings. Fantastic idea. Colby says, I have a variant Kenku race, uh, Birds of Paradise rather than Crows and Ravens. I like to add to my campaigns uh, that instead of mimicry, uh, I have to sing all the time. How beautiful. Uh, Crafty says that he's got to go, but it's fun hanging out for a while. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much for being here, Crafty. Uh, have a lovely rest of your evening. Um... spend a lot of time drawing every single coin in this armor. Um, if I do just a few and then I could do a kind of, let's see if I go Idea. Let's do that. Let's see what this looks like. Could work, couldn't it?
safe. Shit, I think there's a little more. Uh, you know, that's pretty coin like to me. Ooh. Oh, there we go. That's your man. That's your man. It doesn't count unless you draw every single coin, Josh. My goodness. Uh, I think you're going to be sorely disappointed, Colby. My bad. stopped and improved we can do this guys I'm starting to flag a little bit here so we might need to wrap this up fairly quickly it's been a very tough time here at the uh, at Arcane Towers uh, recently there's been some not so fun stuff um, so I'm not been sleeping particularly well, but um, we might need to wrap it up fairly soon. So I can feel my eyes starting to tell me that it's time for bed. Even though it's only eight here. Um, What can we do? this up um, and rather than doing a half ass job I think I'll end the stream there I will finish this drawing off and then I'll post it to you guys um, in the next couple of days uh, finish it at my leisure when I'm fully rested um, but uh, it's been lovely streaming with you all and I hope we can do it again soon. We have a stream coming up soon um, that uh, is not next week, but is the week after at the same time. And that's going to be uh, making a uh, pet to use in your DD games. Perhaps a little bit ambitious um, to try and make a whole suit of armor in two hours. It's maybe a bit more of a more than a two hour job. Um, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's stream. Uh, I will definitely look back through the stream. Um, and uh, yeah, we can I can finish it off and then and post it to you all later on. Uh, but yeah, it's been lovely chatting with you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. 
or rest of your morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and yeah, I'll post it in the Discord. I'll also try and post it in Instagram and stuff like that when I'm done. But I'll go through and rewatch everything and uh, uh, and make sure to check out um, all of your suggestions and add the powers and so on and so forth. And yeah, have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.